Welcome to this episode of OpenSCAD by DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, I want to do a bit of an introductory video to OpenSCAD. So for you, those old timers that have been with me for a long while, this is just going to be rehash, but we have 500 or so new people who have joined us from my main DIY3DTech.com channel. For those folks who've come over, I want to share a little bit and also give them a gift for subscribing to share a bit more about OpenSCAD. What is it all about? How does it work? And those kind of basics so they can kind of get a flavor for this. Now this is really not a tutorial on how to use the various pieces but just to give everybody a little bit of a flavor what this is about and so you can help make some decisions. Is this the right thing for you? Now one of the things I want to start out with is, is how does OpenSCAD work? So in front of us we have basically the integrated design environment. So on this side we have the editing pane which is where we have all of our code which you can see. Over here in this yellow space we have our visualization or rendering window and then down here we have our console so this kicks out whatever the interpreter sees and messages and things like that. So it's pretty straightforward programming um, you know environment nothing special nothing complicated. So let's take a look at some of the attributes with all this for OpenSCAD. So the first thing to know is it's based upon primitive objects. What do I mean when I say it's based upon primi primitive objects? I'll spit that out. Is It uses things like cubes, cylinders, and spheres to create more complicated objects. So we join those together in a bland-based manner, and that's what I have next here is we can either union them or difference them or union them and difference them. So we can come up with some really complicated shapes this way. Now the other thing is, so we don't get lost, this is all Cartesian based and I'm not sure if I got the word Cartesian right spelled correctly but you get the idea. If I didn't, it, everything is based on an XYZ coordinate plane. So this makes it very easy not to get lost because all you have to do is think of each of your objects in an XYZ plane and, you know, Bob's your uncle in short. Um, so very easy to kind of think about. Uh, the next thing is you can create Thingiverse customizers with this. Yes, so when you go to Thingiverse and you maybe use one of those customizers out there, that's all OpenSCAD because what happens is you take this code, you upload it, and it creates the Thingiverse uh, program. So I'll have some links below because uh, I've also uh, done a couple tutorials on creating Thingiverse customizers out there too, which you might be interested in. So again, it's, it's really an interesting package for creating things. And I'll talk a little bit more about why I feel this way in a bit. However, there are some limitations, and maybe some of those limitations are good or bad things. The number one limitation is this is more of a scripting language than a programming language. Now, for you uh, programmers out there, this, this might be um, you know, a, a bit of a shortfall. For those who are just getting new to programming, probably not that big of a shortfall. What does it mean when I say a scripting language? What well, runs from the top down? There's no recursion. So this is something else I've uh, listed here. Is it has a lack of recursion. So you can't go from the bottom back up to the top and rerun something again. You can only uh, run from the top down. Now, I won't get into the great details of that, but just kind of know that's how it works. Limited variable variable use. Why do I say this? Because of the lack of recursion. So you cannot have something lower in your code change variable and expect it to be changed at the top of your code. So you really have to think about how to structure your code and this can be a limitation if you're used to programming in C or some other language like that where you can develop recursion, polymorphism, those type of things. It's not available here. So think top down. Now, with those things out of the way, I want to show you how easy it really is to work in OpenSCAD. So, oh, before I get there, one of the things I want to mention is OpenSCAD can deal with both 3D objects as well as 2D objects. And this is one of the big, I think, powerful aspects of OpenSCAD, at least for me, because whether it's 3D printing, CNC, I can do it all right here, one program. Because if we look at how we can export, uh, we can export as an STL, DXF, and SVG. So these are the primary ones that I use. We can also export as an image in some other formats. But these are the three formats I use all the time. So I can design something here. I can take it out as a DXF, run it into my CAM program, cut 2D, 
and run it on the milling machine. Uh, I can take it out as an STL, run it through a slicer, 3D printer. Hey, uh, world's your oyster here. So this is another thing that I like about it. But let's jump back. Now, one of the things for those not uh, inclinated to programming already, these double slashes are comments. So when you comment something, basically it's called com commenting it out. And so I'm going to remove these to remove the comment out. And so we can run this. So now what we're going to do is we're just going to create a queue. And one of the things, you, again, as I mentioned, it runs top down. So you have to render or actually do a preview and that's what this little box is up here you can either hit this or press F5 to do a pre-rendering now what happens is this kinda does a shortcut render I'm not gonna get into all the technical details if you want to actually fully render this for export you have to go up here to actually render it this is only a preview mode so it works faster if you will so as you see we have a cube here and this cube is 18 millimeters by 18 by 18 so we have X, Y, and Z. Very simple. So this is great stuff. And this is what I was trying to explain a little bit earlier. You really can't get lost. So long as you think in X, Y, Z, all the objects work in an X, Y, Z format. Now, you have a number of other attributes you can add. I'm not going to get into each one of them. But I am going to show you this one. So I can go, I can change this true. And notice, so I'm just going to copy this. Notice how this is centered on my Cartesian plane I can type in false and hopefully I've spelled that correctly and see how it's changed my origin so again there's a lot of flexibility you can have with this and I'm not going to get into all the details of why you'd want to do this but this is also a very powerful feature is being able to control your orientation and also mix and match your orientation however let's go ahead and take a look at the cylinder now now I think the cylinder is probably one of the most powerful commands in all of OpenSCAD. So we've created the cylinder. Now this looks a little funky, don't you think? It doesn't really look too round. Well what we can do is we can actually add a fragment command. Notice I, I, I mentioned a little while ago that there are other commands or, or um, attributes you can add. So if I add fragments equal 60, notice how smooth that got. Now the neat part about this is say I want to turn this into a square. I want to turn a cylinder into a square. Do you guys think I can do that? Well, let's tell it fragments four. I now have a square. If I want a triangle, all I do is change fragments equal three, and I have a triangle. So this is one of the great powers, and it gets even better than this. Let's uh, let's go back to four, and then let's change the the top value to one. And then hit this and see we have a little sort of flat topped pyramid. So again, you can take, especially with the cylinder, and create all kinds of very complex shapes inside of itself, let alone combining it with other components. So with this being said, let's take a quick look at the sphere. So uh, again, very much like the cylinder. We take a look at it, and here it goes. Now, notice we have the FN function down here, the fragments equal 60, because we can really turn this guy into a blocky monster by changing it to 6. And see, we can create, again, with the sphere, just like the cylinder, a very complicated object, very simply in OpenSCAD, uh, just by using some simple math. Now, we've looked at the primary... Um, objects in the 3D world. Let's take a quick look at the 2D world. So again, the equivalent of the cylinder in the 2D world is a circle, and so let's go ahead and create one. Now notice that this looks 3D-ish. This is actually not. This is 2D. It's only 3D for our perspective because you can see here it's got one dimension. It has a diameter. And also it has the function command, so we can also take this as we did the cylinder above and say turn it into a square triangle or whatever we want and also notice the origin works the same so again you'll notice that uh, all these primitive components all basically work the same so when you're learning this it's actually fairly easy because once you learn one you're pretty much learning the the attributes to them all so let's take a quick look at the square here and then comment that out and so it's very very similar again and notice we have X and Y and since it's two dimensions we don't have a Z so again it's going to work in a two-dimensional Cartesian plane so we can't get lost which is really great 
Now we can also move these in three-dimensional space and we can also move them with inside their own plane. I'm not going to get into that in, in this episode. I'm going to do another introductory episode of how do we move these. But we can also, as you see up here, I've got some constructs up here for difference in union. These are the Boolean logic that we can apply to these guys. So again, this is really simple stuff and you don't have to get all worked up about all this fancy code because if I take this, let's say I copy this square out and I go to say I'm going to create a new uh, instance of the IDE, I can paste this in, just do a control V and I did it twice so I'm going to just erase one and then we're just going to do preview and boom. So that's all there is. So I've created a square with one line of code. And one of the things to note is the semicolon. So the semicolon at the end of this, like uh, many other languages, tells it, okay, instantiate whatever comes before. So create that. You see the semicolon, whatever becomes, whatever comes before that, do it. And so it's pretty simple. And this is also a great way to help you keep track because as you break things down with semicolons. Now the other great thing about this is it has a great help system because we can go here to cheat sheet. So let's go ahead and pull up the cheat sheet. And here we have the open open SCAD cheat sheet. Now you have to be online. This is online. What I do is I've actually made a PDF of this and I kind of keep it local. So if I'm not online, I can still access it. All this stuff is hyperlinked. So you can notice the syntax help you have here, the 2D objects, the 3D objects. Uh, the Boolean operators, the transformations, the modifiers, all this stuff. And if you have a question, all you have to do is click on it. So if I want to know more in the circle, I just click on the circle. And here it gives sample code and everything. So this is actually how I learned OpenSCAD is really primarily from the cheat sheet. Is I went and I looked at the examples, I seen how they were constructed, and I just kind of copied them. And so made it very simple and easy actually. So with that, I think pretty much that's about it for this intro. So uh, open to SCAD is not something that you should fear. You know, one thing I'm going to be up front, you need to be relatively okay with math because there is going to be some math and how things come together. And you're going to need to be somewhat okay with logic. But hey, I tell you what, if you're messing with 3D printing and all this other stuff anyway, you should be good at these attributes anyhow because even if you go into something like Fusion 360, etc., you're going to have to deal with very similar. So, uh, and, and again, to do a lot of interesting uh, things, you don't have to get too fancy. But if you want to get fancy, hey, uh, we'll your oyster here. So, anyways, hopefully you found it interesting. If you did, hit the thumbs up. Let me know in the comments below if you have some other questions, that kind of stuff. There's tons of great tutorials online, so I, I really have avoided jumping into the tutorial aspect of OpenSCAD because uh, several people have put out several different iterations, and they're all very good. So I, I hate repeating work that's already been done. So really what I focus this channel on is the creation of different objects or code modules, and I put them out there for free for you guys to get and use, and also see how I did something. You know, So if you're looking how to create uh, a mesh of circles or something like that, I probably got the code. So definitely check out the OpenSCAD site too because I list all the code that I do on this channel out there. So big thumbs up. Thank you very much for subscribing. If you ha are new to this channel and you haven't subscribed, please hit that button and we'll catch you guys in the next video. Cheers.